live from Gary O'Neill Studios in Baltimore. You're listening to the C Plan News Show. Gary O'Neill. All right, here you go. What's up, everybody? What's up? Happy Pod Day! Yeah! Woo! What's up, everybody? What's up? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Sea Plan Do Show with me, professional mindset coach, business coach, relationship coach, your favorite coach's coach motivational speaker, cigar and wing aficionado and everything else is in my LinkedIn. Everything else is on my bio. Check it out. You don't have, don't watch me go watch TV. Well, no, watch me. Mr. Gary O'Neill Jr. And as always, when you see me out in the streets pushing P, don't stop me. Just don't forget the junior. Shout out to Pops. We have another Power Pack podcast. That's what Pushing P stands for. Power Pack podcast. All right. But I feel old saying pushing P because I feel like I shouldn't say it. But for, I think future's older than me. So we good. All right. Season five. Season cinco. Numero tres. All right. And I have some amazing, amazing, amazing coaches on season five, episode three. Brag. Where we're going to talk about relationships. We're going to talk about how you can keep your marriage forever. All right. And I have some wonderful coaches that will come in and we'll be talking about that. All right. As you know. So guess what? Last week I had amazing guests on the show, had some amazing guests. Shout out to Leo. Shout out to Pablo. And people like, hey, wait a minute. You're trying to change up the format. I said, what do you mean? They said, hey, you we didn't do our motivational uh, of the week. We didn't do our song of the week. I said, all right, I'll bring it back. I'm sorry, because I got to give the people what they want. All right. So. Uh, without further ado, can I get to my shout outs? Of course I can. All right. It's my show. It's your show. It's our show. First, my day one, a one listeners that have been listening to me since before studios, since before everything, when I was just going Facebook live, my day one, a one listeners, shout out to you. All right. People that are listening for the first time or watching this for the first time, people that are in the U S outside of the U S my, my wonderful, my national treasure, which is my candy corn crew. Triple C's, as as well as anybody else. If the universe has brought you to us, brought me to you, you to me, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I just want to make sure that I do my job. All right. Again, season five, episode three, brag. Oh man, this show, I really I am so fortunate and so lucky to have amazing guests on the show. And we're going to talk about if you are in a marriage right now, if you are in a long-term relationship, you're looking to take your relationship to the next level, we're going to go over some information. All right. So without further ado, can we get to our C plan do moment of the week? Of course we can sponsored by heart savers, Maryland. So right after your wonderful, (laughs) you see it right after our word from our sponsor, we're going to get right to it. Are you looking to get certified in CPR first aid or other life-saving skills? Heart Savers Maryland is your premier CPR training facility. Individual and classroom sessions available. Schedule your training at heartsaversmd.com. Each second counts. Get trained today. All right, your C Plan Do moment of the week is entitled Mind. M I N D. Mind. Here are six important guidelines for your life right now. Six on season five. Number one, when you are alone, Mind your thoughts. What do you think about when you're in your room? Sometimes do you stare at the wall? All right. Mind your thoughts. Number two, when you are with your friends, mind your tongue. It's so easy to fire back and say things that can ruin them, but they're your friends. So when you're with your friends, mind your tongue. Number three, when you are angry. Mind your temper, because if you're like me, if you've experienced anger at times and not able to harness that, you know that sometimes you'll see the worst things you've ever said in your life when you're upset. Number four, when you're with a group, hey, mind your behavior. You're representing, aren't you? You're representing. Number five, when you're in trouble, mind your emotions. 
When you're in trouble, mind those emotions. And number six, when God and whatever God is to you, when God starts blessing you, mind your ego. Sometimes we forget. So that is your C plan do moment of the week. Mind. All right, moving forward, let's get right into our green light entertainment song of the week. And guess what? If you're if you're listening to this right now, right after our brief commercial, you're gonna hear our song of the week. If you're watching this, if you're watching me, guess what? If you're gonna if you're watching it right now on YouTube or whatever streaming platform you might have came across, what you're gonna do is you know how YouTube is. You know that we can't watch it. So just look in the comment section after you liking and sharing and subscribing. See what the song is of the week. Catch that vibe. All right, let's get to it. Having a wedding, birthday party, or other social or corporate event, contact Greenlight Entertainment today with our experienced DJs, quality sound, and professional service. We look to make your event the event. Check us out on the web at www.greenlightentertain.com with Greenlight Entertainment. You have the green light. Yes, 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 yes. So please let me know how you felt about that song. Please let, know, please let me know how you're feeling about the show. How you feel about season five? All right. So without further ado, can I introduce this amazing couple to the show? All right. So right now, let me go ahead and switch the format. <laughs> Look at the format. Uh, when you see the format getting switched, you know what's happening. Bang. Look at that. What's up, guys? Hey. Hey, hey. All right. So please let me formally welcome to the show the second. Look at that. A second. Another round of amazing guests here on season five. Al and Gleesey. Welcome to the show. Thank you hey, so much. Thanks for having us. Oh, man. I can't wait to talk to you guys yeah. about this wonderful and amazing couple. All right. So here, season five, episode three, brag. I said, hey, it, who, I came. Now, let me give you the backstory. Because I'm always looking for different content. And, you know, the algorithms at times, they do work. So when you're looking at certain things, people come around. So I was looking at, hey, relationship coaching, marriage counseling, marriage coaching. And guess who popped up? So can I? So do I have permission to formally on this show? We like to read people's bios. So can I formally read your bio to everybody who may not know you? Yeah. Absolutely. Yep, yep. <clears throat> Al and Gleesey, and it's Gleesey, right? Yeah. Yeah. Al and Gleesey have been married for 15 years and will celebrate their 16th this year. Yes. They are parents of two beautiful children, Isaiah and Layla. They are the owners of Forever I Do. Although they birthed Forever I Do during the 2020 pandemic, after seeing and hearing about the impact the pandemic was having on married couples and relationships as a whole, it's not where the passion for marriage began. They often recall their early struggles in marriage as they pretty much made things up and they went along and found themselves on the brink of divorce. They also recall their time in marriage counseling and couples groups at their local church where they eventually unpacked baggage, found freedom, yeah. and developed marital tools that changed the traje trajectory of their marriage. Alan Gleesey rebuilt their marriage on values and vision. They believe values and vision are key to leaving a legacy for their family and to impact the marriage community they continue to connect with. It is their vision to... There we go. We sort of went out. Yeah. We'll no worries. No worries. This is, all right. So, man, that was amazing. So, again, welcome to the show. That was an amazing bio to read. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And usually what happens is I just take like a very, so when I ask people, let me pull you guys behind the curtain. When I do a very condensed version of someone's bio, I just say, okay, this is great. This is great. This is great. Let me put it together. But I wanted to be able to read that because brag because when I saw the acronym BRAG, I said, well, what does BRAG stand for? And when I saw it, it said 
build relationships according to God. I say, oh, I got to read all that. I got to read all that. All right. All right. So thank you and welcome to the show. And congratulations on your upcoming wedding anniversary. When it, When is it? August 19th. August 19th. That's, that's going to be an amazing. She looked at me. She wanted to see if I knew it. <laughs> Ooh, Al, listen, I didn't want to even set you up. That's what I was like. Please let him know. It. <laughs> Please let him know it. Okay. So I was like, yeah. So I'm glad you came through and just crushed that. Thank you, Al. Thank you. Crush that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, let's get started with, with Brad. But before we do, I know you guys have checked out the show. Yeah. And with any guest that has been happening for as long as I've had this show, they always get the questions. All right. Now I know some other podcasts, they don't give you the questions. I don't get that. I respect it, but I don't get that. I want you to be the best. But here on the C Plan Do show, oh, there are some questions that you don't know. And if you got it, and guess what? The amazing segment. This amazing segment has brought so much laughter to me that I said, you know what? I got to do a little video for it. So, Al Gleesey, welcome to the second version of Fuego Rapido! There you go. There you go. See, that's the move. See, that's the move, guys. See, I was like, oh, sometimes you got to sway your hips. No, I'm old enough now. So now I just move very <laughs> enthusiastically. If you start moving those shoulders, woo none of right now, the bottoms, nothing is moving. I'm just doing this. <laughs> so with Fuego, Rapido, there are questions that, hey, guys, they didn't know I was going to ask. All right. Now, guess what? I have staple questions that I always like to ask everyone because I want to see where we're going at here. All right. First question for you guys as a couple. Wings, chicken wings. Mm. You guys say you're from, you guys are from Maryland, right? Yes. Uh, Al, you're from Maryland, right? We talked about it earlier. G, you're from Maryland? Yeah. Okay. All right. So wings, flats or drums? I like flats. Yeah, I'm a drums guy though. Okay, that's how that marriage works. See, that's how the marriage works. Get someone who has differences more than you. No, yeah. there we go. Great. See, they're on board. Okay. See, most people, guys, they answer that question. They knock it out. I'm good with that. Second question, blue cheese or ranch? Ranch. Yes, ranch. No blue cheese. All right. Okay. All right. Differences. <laughs> that's fine. All right, I'm I'm even good with that. Here's the third question. Can I talk to you guys? Maybe I need some coaching because look, this is this is a look at it. This is a coach's corner, right? Yeah. I might need some help with this because I find issues with this third question. All right, because all the other questions are random. I just think of some random questions, but this one right here, I don't know, guys. What is your opinion of candy corn? Love it. So don't don't ask other. Well, I mean, people. it's it's okay, but it's. It's, it kind of like fall into that. I just remember it being in like grandma's candy dish. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Sound like she is, is at, sound like your grandmother's an amazing woman. So that's <laughs> awesome. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I don't know, Al. It seemed like you really wasn't on board with the candy corn. So sorry. I'm going to have to introduce Gleesey into the candy corn, official candy corn crew. So I'm going to have to make sure I send her a bag of candy corn. All right. Got you. That's it. All right. So we got out the staple questions. All right. So those are the staple questions. Now, here's a question for you guys. If you could only listen to one artist in all their music, it could be an artist or a group. That's all you can hear in your ear is their music. Who would it be? Gleesey, we'll start with you. Oh, man. I know. I would probably go with like India Ari. Like, I love okay. I like her vibe. I like her music. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. And did you see recently she was in the news? Uh, yeah. She was pulling her music off of Spotify. Yeah. And I was like, when I saw her name trending, I was like, maybe she has new music out. I would, I would, I, you know, I think she might have new music out, but you know, these big engines, we're not seeing it. So we're going to have to check it out today. All right. Yeah. Okay. Al, one yeah. artist or group. That's it. That's all you can listen to for the rest of your life. I'm a old school. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Prince. Prince. 
What is yeah. your favorite Prince song? Purple Rain. Rain. <laughs> <laughs> that I mean that my favorite Prince song. I'm gonna say is Insatiable. I, I, that's that's my favorite song. I like that song, but I, I'm more of a Michael Jackson fan than a Prince fan. But Prince is amazing. He's a he's a musician's musician. So you gotta yeah, I like that. Okay, great. All right, okay. All right, here we go. Something since you guys are married, it's been a while. There's not, I don't think there's anything I can say to break this amazing union up. So here we go. Let's just see. Let's just see what happens. Al, what is something that is low key that you find annoying about Gleesey? <laughs> I like to say before you answer, I don't have enough space in my house. So. I know you you're in here, so just you, you know, just say something like, you know. She doesn't like to put away her clothes. Okay, that's 99% of the population. All right, cool. All right. Leave them in the basket. So she just leave them in the basket. Yeah, right. there, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, Gleesey, you, what's up? One thing that's you know, somewhat somewhat that's playfully annoying about uh, Al. Um, so it's crazy because the thing that kind of sort of annoys me is the thing that I love about him as well. Okay. And so it's just there. how structured he is. He's very structured and it's completely opposite of me. So mm -hmm. I love it, but it can drive me crazy as well. Okay. So when it comes to folding those clothes, putting them away. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take exactly. it. <laughs> okay. All right. And so here's a new thing I like to add on the show. We're going to, at first I say flex, but no, we're going to give ourselves credit. Al, what is something that as a couple that you would like to publicly say, hey, we give credit for this. It could be something that happened in the 30 days, something that happened in a year. Give us something that you haven't given yourself credit for, either you or your, your relationship, something where, hey, you know what? Let's put it out here because we often don't really want to talk about ourselves. We identify ourselves as, hey, we're humble, but it's okay to flex. It's okay to say, hey, man, I did this. We did this. So what is something that you want to just put out there as far as giving yourself credit for on the C-Plan Do Show? I would say um, being able to give back. Mm, uh, okay. Like we probably never saw ourselves as, well, at least I didn't. Uh, see that I would get to a place where I can actually give back and like mm -hmm. help others, try to help pull other people up. So, Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes we don't do that. That's amazing. All right. All right, Gleesey. I think for me is um, being able to talk about our story. Um, Cause I know for a long time, like there was a lot of shame um, and I had a really difficult time at sharing, um, you know, our, hard, our hardest seasons. Um, but being able to share that and seeing it provide healing for other people has been really good. Oh, thank you. All right. Okay. One last question here on Fuego. Rapido! See, this is my favorite segment outside of <laughs> asking the questions. All right. Uh, Gleesey, what is your favorite gadget right now? Oh, <laughs> I can't really say it because then people are going to talk about me, but I am in love with my iPad. I am an a Android girl. Oh, I'm oh, an Android wow. girl, but I had to get an iPad. to. T so um, that has to be my thing. But we might have to edit that part out because them oh. Apple numbers are going <laughs> to come no, after no. me. That's going to bring the views up. They're going to be like, <laughs> why is she doing it? She needs to come over to the side. I'm not going to lie. I, I just came over about a year and a half ago. I came over to full Apple and I'm like, yeah. I, I, I don't have an issue. I'm not one of those that start turning on my Android people, but you know, I, I do understand now. Thank you. All right, I do understand. So it's only a matter of time. You already got the iPad. Then it's, it's just yeah. yep. Yep, it's gonna be that time. FaceTime? What? <laughs> Listen. All right, Al, your favorite gadget right now. Favorite gadget is probably just the uh the TV, probably. Yeah, yeah. You you watch it. What shows are you are you watching any shows or any checking out anything right now? What are you looking at? Um we've been watching the power series, so Tommy season just started up, so watching that. See, I just started getting caught because I watch of course I watched the first season. I was like, man, I don't know if I can get to the second. I don't know if I can get to the 
book two. Yeah. I don't know. But I started watching it, right? And I was like, you know what? All right, this is getting good. Because I was like, how the hell is Tariq? Yes. <laughs> going yes. to school. Yes. Being a drug dealer and doing all these things and still got to do grades. I only, I could barely get up to go to school. <laughs> time, but I only had one job. He doing, and he's in this hard class. I'm yeah. like, I'm all like, this is a lot going on for this kid. I'm like, I, I felt bad for him. I'm like, man, this is crazy. <laughs> but I do like the series. I want to get through. So I want to sort of see it in order. So I know Kanan is the next one I need to watch. But you're what? Have you already started watching the Tommy one already? And you yeah. know, we officially only calling it Tommy. We're not call, no one's calling it Force, guys. Stars. I know you're listening to the show. We're not calling it Force. We're calling it Tommy. That's the name. <laughs> I never mentioned Force. I say the Tommy one. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody said, hey, did you watch Force? Oh, Tommy? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so I do. Now, okay, real quick side question. Al. Do you feel, let's say that there's a show, since your your gadget is a show, that, that a gadget is TG. Let's say that you are watching a show and you start watching it without Gleesey. Ah. Yeah. You just, you just hit way too close. <laughs> way too close. So I don't even, I, don't even, I shouldn't even ask this, right? You've been falling asleep and stuff. So I mean, like. Oh my so, so sometimes, like, you got to keep going. Like, you're, you, you're, you, you, you're in it. You're locked in. you locked in. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like, yeah. If you start an episode and you fall asleep in the middle of it, like, what you supposed to pause it? You like, can I'll... watch the rest of that episode, but don't go on to the next yeah. one. Yeah, it'd be getting too good. Some, <laughs> some of the series be getting too good. I think I'm going to have to write a book. We're going to have to come <laughs> up with us as a, We're going to have to come up with a book on that. Entitled Don't Watch the Episode Without Me. Because I, I don't know. I, I'm going to have to. We're going to have to talk about that. <laughs> All right, but thank you guys for playing Fuego Rapido. Thank you so much. All right. Let's get into these questions. Right. Because I really when I checked out what you guys were talking about as far as brag, you know, when you think about the word brag, when you think about it, it's a very, hey, look at me, guys. I'm, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And when I saw what the acronym meant which is building relationships according to God, I say, wow. So let's talk about it. So you created BRAG. Again, BRAG stands for, guys, building relationships according to God. So please tell us, how do you start that? What, 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 what made you get into that? What made you want to start BRAG? So uh, it kind of goes back to, like, the, the bio that you were reading. Like, we, I would say, first five, six years of our marriage, we just were making it up. Like, we had no clue what we were doing. We tried to go to elders. We were here, little cliche terms, happy wife, happy life, just say yes there. Like, and I'm like, I'm looking at him like, what? Like, is that what it's about? Like, no. Um, but we just, we, we knew everything that we didn't want to do, but we had no clue like what we actually wanted to do, how we wanted to build our marriage. So we just made stuff up and <laughs> it ain't work. Like it was holes everywhere. Uh, and so, Eventually, we got to a place where uh, we got around some healthy couples and they started giving us tools. And we realized that every tool that we were given, you can tie it back to God. And and we realized with God in the center, like you truly can brag about your marriage. Your marriage can go to a healthy place, but it has to be built according to what he says. Mm -hmm. And I know like some people may hear that and think the thousand of dues and in, 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 like, Old Testament type of, you know, things like women be submissive and stay at home. No, that's not what we're talking about at all. Uh, but yeah, like if you build it according to him, tie every merge, merge tool that you find back to him, then you can see your merge again, get to a healthy place. Yeah. You can start to thrive instead of some people like to survive and merge. They think mm. to death do you part is the only thing like, my goal is to make it until I die in my marriage. And that ain't it. Like, right. it ain't about survival. It's about thriving. So, again, when you learn how to brag, you will thrive. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. Wow, that was great. I love that. Thriving and not surviving. And unfortunately, I'm pretty sure uh, uh, us as coaches, we've seen that. Absolutely. Where people are just like, yeah, just enough. You know, they're looking at it like it's a jail term. Like, yes. oh, man. Yeah. You know, so that that thank you for that. All right. Okay, so again, congratulations. 
15 years, 16 in August. Yeah. What do you think, and Gleesey, I'll toss this to you. What do you think are the necessary components to be able to brag? So what do you think are the necessary components to have uh, that successful relationship? You're like, hey, here are the main tools. I got my toolbox. What are the main things that need to be, need to be in there? I think one of the biggest ones for me is community. Um, yeah. For so long, we, I wouldn't say we were doing marriage in isolation, but we didn't have healthy couples around us so that we could see what it was like to live a health or to have a healthy marriage. Um, it was also good to be around community to understand that the issues that we were going through, a lot of other people were going through the same yeah. things, but yeah. they were able to overcome them. And, but we didn't have those same tools. So once we were able to get in community, a lot of healing took place in our marriage. Um, and we were able to grow from there. Um, another thing is grace. You need to have grace mm -hmm. in marriage because you're taking your separate life and combining it with somebody else. And it's not, it could be some friction and it's not always a smooth transition, but you have to allow yourself some grace, allow your, your spouse some grace so that you guys can grow together. Hmm. Thank you for that. So follow up, Al, because I saw that you, you posted this, uh, I want to say earlier today, and I just want to bring it to light. What do you think kills marriages, relationships? Uh, the number one thing and the thing that we constantly talking about is just a lack of vision. Uh, mm, Jesus, come on. I always like to use like this analogy like for, for us fellas, like if you go pick up a girl that you're trying to date or even if it's wifey and and y'all get in the car and she look over at you, the first thing she's going to ask you is, where are we going? And if you say, oh, we're just going for a drive, like after so long, she's going to say, OK, now for real, where are we going? And I think that's how we get into our relationships. That's how we get into our marriage. We we ask the we ask the girl that we, we like, we love, whatever, to get in the car with us and merge. And then we just start driving and they ask us where we're going. And we can't answer. And sooner or later, they're going to get tired of us not being able to answer. So they want to start trying to take the lead or, or try to give you ideas. Before you get them in a car, you need to have a vision of where you're going. Before you ask them to marry you, you need to have a vision of where you're going. You can't just expect them to sit in the car next to you and ride shotgun and you don't have a clue where your final destination is. You don't have a clue what pit stops may come up. You don't have a clue where you're going to refuel. You got to know where you're going. Just like you got to have a plan. You got to see it, the vision. You got to plan it, actually write it down. And that's the only way you can actually do it. Um, and I would say that and, and, and values. Another thing we do, we get into relationships with people who we don't share values with. And we're afraid to have those conversations until so something pop up in the marriage. I'll just use kids, for example. You, you got your kid two years old now. They in terrible two stage. They turn up the house and you go to grab them up and you about to take them to the room to give them a spanking. And then wifey looks at you like, um, I put the corner so we can put the time. Up. And now you're, you're looking at each other like, time out and you and she's looking at you like spanking but you never had that discussion you didn't realize you didn't share that value and that's just one area but again it can be other areas where eventually it's going to pop up that if you don't share values there's no way that you can actually build a healthy marriage because you want to constantly butt heads because you just don't see things eye to eye you are not headed in the same direction and it's impossible for you to walk together in vision or with vision if you don't see eye to eye, you aren't walking in the same direction. Mm. Thank you. You guys just crushed that. That could be the end of the show right there. <laughs> you know, because I think, Al, like what you're talking about, I love using that type of analogy when I talk about when people say, oh, you got to submit, you got to submit. But it's about you got to be a leader. So yes. if I'm in the car, if I'm in the car and let's say that we you're I like how you did it where, hey, we don't know where we're going. Usually when I talk about it, it's like, hey, we do know where we're going. Let's say that let's say we going to uh, uh, get food or something like that. If she knows where I'm going, where how we get there and I know. And if I'm making the right 
when we're supposed to make a right. I'm making a left when we're supposed to make a left. I'm going straight. Then she doesn't she doesn't have to worry about or whoever your partner is. They don't have to worry about looking at the road. They playing with the music. They taking selfies with their iPhone. (laughs) <laughs> like, I, I'm not that guy. I'm sorry. Dang, dang, it's taking over. I realize it's taking over me now. But when you do that, you don't have to worry about it. But if you're making a left when you're supposed to make a right, you're making a right when you're supposed to make a left, you going around about the wrong way. Guess what? The person will say, What's going on here? Oh, yeah. And now they can't be the DJ. Now they can't view the scenery. Now they got to watch you. Now they got to be critical of you. So I really, really liked how you did that because I always like to highlight the we know where we're going, but you're right. We just going for a ride. I'm, I'm. If if somebody told me, "Hey, get in the car. We going for a ride." I'm immediately going to think I'm on one of these power episodes. <laughs> <laughs> they just let me come up short. They say this is a big, rich town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that you guys crushed that question. I love that. That was really, really good. All right. So, uh, so here, season five. Episode three, brag with what? So, would you guys consider yourselves? Because I looked in your bio, do you guys consider yourselves marriage coaches? What What is the phrase that you guys give yourselves? Because that's the one thing I meant to ask you. Like, what do you concern? What do you consider yourselves? Coaches, mentors. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Coaches, and most people, coaches. unfortunately, guys, they have a ton of titles. So I really do appreciate the humbleness, you know, that I'm like, oh, okay, well, they didn't even refer to themselves as anything, but I really, really like it. All right. So season five, episode three, brag with marriage coaches, marriage counselors, Al and Gleesey. See how that rolls off the tongue? See how that works? All right. All right. So uh, next question. So, and this is, you guys can ping pong back and forth with our current times, because it's a lot going on, Al. It's a lot going on, Gleesey. With our current times where things are, uh, in my perspective, you know, uh, very microwaved. We need it now. Uh, Very over-sexualized. And also, as we see what people are probably telling us, what we see on social media as far as people commenting or people just talking to us, that things seem to be very mediocre. All right? Last season I had an episode and, and we talked about the dating pool and a dating pool has pee in it. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you guys who have the vision, who's carrying out the vision? So, you know, here on the Sea Plan Do show, you guys are doing it, right? So to the people that are, let's say we have a person that's pessimistic about dating, about long-term dating, vision dating, uh, marriage. What would you say to that person who feels like they may not be able to brag or even the person that's in a relationship now that is stru- surviving and not thriving? What would you guys say to them um, about that? So everything that we talk about, everything that um, we give tools about are things that we've lived. Yeah. So like we we've, we've had hard times in our marriage, like we've had times where. We didn't want to talk to each other or we weren't talking to each other and we were kind of going our separate ways or doing our own thing. So like we've been there Mm -hmm. and we know how this helps and how this works. So we can speak from, from personal experience. Like if you do this, this is going to happen. And and just the time we aren't doing it our way. So we aren't giving anybody any tools. That's like, this is the our way. This is the Gleesey way. If you do it my way, if you make your merch just like mine, then it'll work. No, no. This is all about God's way. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. again, like and it get it again, it ain't the thousand the old it ain't old school. Like we we use modern day tools. Um, I even like uh so one of your episodes you were talking about your stop acronym. And I was like, oh man, like we have a stop acronym yeah. too. Yeah. Like, but again, it's 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 modern day, but we can tie all of it back. For example, I'll stop acting them. Sit still. God says, be still and know that I am God. Mm. Talk it out. Again, he, he talks about communication. He talks about having, um, be slow to anger and quick to listen. Yeah, yeah. With I had to say that to myself plenty of times. Yeah. Open your heart. Yeah. He talks about turning hearts of stone that's into flesh. flesh. Yeah. And that's the only way you can receive from each other because often our hearts get hardened. And we're not hearing them anymore. We're not hearing our spouse anymore. 
And then we talk about pursuing reconciliation. It's not about winning. And I think that's that's one of the things with the microwave culture, everybody want to win, 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 win. And they don't realize in a relationship, winning is when you can reconcile and now you can again walk together towards that vision, towards that purpose, because every couple has a purpose. So this isn't our way. Yeah. We tried, we started trying God's way, and and, and we'll be be real, like we were pessimistic. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe I'll just try this one thing. Let me see if that worked first. Oh, that worked? Okay, let me try this one too. Let me see if that and then at some point we had to dive all the way in because we realized his track record is perfect. Like yeah. he's yeah. he's like he's better than uh what was the the 90, 98 Chicago Bulls, the 72 and 10 team. Like yeah. He, yeah. his track record is better than that. Undefeated. Uh, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and when we do that, that's when we can learn how to brag. That's when we can actually you won't have to be pessimistic. And I, I will say, like, to those like me, because I'm the one that had to tiptoe in, try it. Try yeah. the increments if you have to. And eventually you'll see, oh, this is turning things around. Like, that, my, my husband, whose heart had been hardened, all of a sudden, like, he seems to be listening. Did he mm. just start to smile? Like, mm-hmm. what's going on here? Wow. Wow, that's that. I I love that acronym. Stop. Let me write it down. Hold on. <laughs> no, but I really like that, especially the O part, because I think that that's what we probably all see. And unfortunately, in my opinion, um, that because we get hardened in our heart, we become defensive. And here is these external distractions that'll come and take you right away from that. So social media, somebody's in your DMs, you don't want to open up and be caring, you know? So I really, that was really good, man. I really like that stop. Uh, I like that, that acronym that, that, that might've been better than the one I said, but I really like how you applied it. And I love, yeah. and, and speaking of that, um, I loved how you just, you just highlighted you guys taking here is the core approaches that we got from the Bible and how can we bring them into now? Yeah. You know, because the, those are core things that ain't going to go away, but being able to change and grow. I really like how you did that. So a- as coaches, as mentors, uh, what current issues with your clients that you feel like, is prevalent nowadays like what's coming what is what is the same because you know if we're if we're not dealing with a lesson we're just going to keep getting the same lesson over and over so with you guys in reference to your coaching what is the same what is like one of the common ones that keep popping up as far as issues i'll say like unspoken needs and then unmet needs and i think unspoken needs eventually become unmet needs Mm. We're afraid to have real conversations. Um, and again, we've been there. I remember yeah. our premarital counseling, we were in like fairy tale la la land, like, oh, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. And he'll take care of this and I'll do it, that. Yeah, it was complete fairy tale land. And mm. we had we just talked past each other. Mm. Just, we just knew we wanted to get married. Uh, we thought love was enough yeah. and it's not. Yeah. Um, you gotta throw some work in there. Mm-hmm. But Unmet needs again because they were unspoken. Okay, you never, so you never said how to be how you want to be loved. So now your spouse is loving you how they think you you want to be loved, or how they feel that mm-hmm. that you should be loved, and they miss the mark, and you won't say nothing. You just take it because you think, well, I guess just, I just should take whatever they're going to give. And like you said earlier, media, mediocrity. We accept mediocrity when we don't speak what we actually need. We are afraid to hurt each other's feelings and in love. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so you, so your perspective, Al, is, Hey, unspoke, which I, Oh man, y'all are, y'all are killing this unspoken needs that transfer or wind up manifesting to unmet needs. Okay. So that's yours. All right. Gleesey, what about you? You're, you know, you're going to probably have a different perspective. So what are some of the things that you keep seeing pop up? So one of the biggest things is I usually spend a lot more time with the um, woman of the relationship because we like to talk um, is not losing themselves. Like, how do I go into a marriage and be submissive and 
do the things that my husband needs me to do and not lose who I am. Mm. Like I, I, I am a manager or CEO of something and now I have to be this docile person. So just talking about like how you bridge who you are yeah. in your marriage is, you know, um, and then another thing is c- communication. Like, like I'll talk about before, just being able to communicate what it is that you need, what it is that you're feeling in a way that your spouse can understand. And that's safe. Yeah. 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 Yep. Some people want to fire off how they're feeling, but it ain't safe. Yeah. yeah uh, do, you, do you guys, uh, how do you guys, do you guys use like the love language? Uh, do you guys talk about that? We do. We do. Um, we actually use two kind of tools like this. So we use love languages because it's important to know how your spouse receive love and how you want to receive love. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing that we use uh, is Enneagram. Because Enneagram helps to help you to learn a little bit more about yourself. Um, and that's one of the things that one of the biggest tools that I love that we use because I learned so much about myself just from the Enneagram. And I learned a lot about L and how like his motivations behind things and like how to approach him about things because I know how it will affect him. And the, and the great thing about both of those tools is like the love language teaches you how to love the person you're with because often we go our default. It's how we receive love. How we want to be loved, right. Exactly. exactly. And that's what we see a, a lot of couples operating in their default modes. And they're wondering, well, why they're not receiving it? Right. And you're not loving them the right way. And then, again, with Enneagram, like, the, the great thing about that is, like, you get to learn how you operate when you're healthy and when you're unhealthy. Mm-hmm. And we often have to tell couples, like, it should never be your goal to change your spouse or to change the person that you're with. But it should be your goal to help get them to the healthiest version of who they are and love that person. Absolutely. Now, you shouldn't accept them in a, those unhealthy characteristics. But again, your goal is not to change them and try to make them into somebody, this carbon copy of the person that you think you want. It's to help them get to that healthiest version of themselves. Who were they created to be? What is inside of them? And how do you help pull that out of them? Yeah. So that they can operate at their best, because when you both operating at your your best, you can fulfill that purpose that you were brought together for. We we believe is is so much purpose that's not being fulfilled in our world because people give up on their relationship too early. Yeah, and you were brought together for something. Yeah, it was it was a reason. It wasn't just to make babies. You were brought together for a, a, a greater purpose. Mm. I, I love it. I love that. All right, so. As far as your brag ideology, so in reviewing it, there are seven main components, seven different areas that you highlight. So, uh, so Al, which one out of all the different components, you know, which one is your favorite? Which one do you really like to sort of light up with, you know, when you're going through uh, the coaching? I would say that our uh, stage where we go to understanding you. So it's mm-hmm. our third, our third component. Understanding you is like. We've had so many couples because we'll break them and talk to them individually and mm-hmm. kind of bring them back together. Like all of a sudden they feel seen. It's like that that light bulb went off in their head and and now they understand who they are. And they also like have that self-reflective moment where they say, I was operating in an unhealthy place. Like I see me in this unhealthy version right here. They also can see the healthy and they can see I can I, it's like it gives the motivation. I can get to there because I've been there before. I've been healthy before. So and, and then when they start sharing it with their spouse or their fiance, it's like all of a sudden they both feel seen and they both feel heard. And they may not even have spoken many words to each other. It's just like hearing more about themselves opens their eyes. Mm. And I think it softens their heart as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. Gleesey, same question. So out of the different components, what's your favorite one? So that one's one of my favorites, but I also okay. like the values part. When you start talking about values, because sometimes we can be saying the same thing oh, just yeah. in a different way. So like we've sat with couples and they, we tell them to do it separate, write down what your values are. And then your spouse writes down what their values are. And then you guys come together and we try to have them 
uh, um, come up with like three to five values. And most of the time they have the same values. They're just saying it in a different way. And a lot of times what could happen is because communication is not the best, yeah. they can't communicate what the value is, even though they're saying the same thing. Because like we've sat with couples and you're like, y'all saying the same exact thing. And, you know, having that extra voice and helping them to understand, it, it goes a long way. So just seeing people's values come together. Oh, wow. I like, I like that. That's definitely, you're right. I, I, I could imagine you guys are just looking at the person and like, yeah, I feel this way. And the other person like, no, nah, I get what you're saying, but I feel this way. And they're like, and y'all just like, y'all saying the same. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love that. I love that. All right. So as we wrap this up, Man, this has been such an amazing and enlightening and empowering relation uh, episode. So I just really want to just take a moment, a quick moment, just to say thank you for you being transparent in what you guys are doing and being able to live through what you're going through to be able to advance. And now you're able you guys are stronger and being able to help other people who are probably at step one where you guys were. So I just wanted to just take a moment to acknowledge and say thank you for that. You are, you, you know, by what you went through now, we're able to, hey, it's going to be a couple that's going to watch the show or see something that you guys are doing and it's saying, hey, you know what? Let's go. As opposed to being hardened. And that's it. So thank you. All right. Last question. Uh, as we wrap this up on season five, episode three, brag with marriage counselors, marriage coaches, Al and Gleesey. Forever, I do. I really like that too. That was nice too. I like that. Um, there's someone right now, someone right now, guys, that is about to propose. It's someone right now that has proposed. This might be day one of them being online, checking out the show, something, or they might be gearing up for their wedding day. What advice would you give them? I would say. Number one, like, have real conversations. Um, I, I once heard it said, like, uh, so for those that are, aren't engaged yet, haven't proposed yet, I would say, like, dating is not a process of inclusion. You don't have to continue to date somebody that you don't see a future with just for something to do. Like, it's purposely a process because it's the process of, of excluding. You're trying to find that person that you want to spend the rest of your life with. So I would say have real conversations. Talk about values. Make sure that you share some before you continue to sit down with this person or Netflix and chill or whatever you, 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 you're doing with this person. Make sure you actually share values because you, you don't want to get all the way down the road and then all of a sudden you start to think, did I waste my time? Um, yeah. For those couples that are already engaged or even married, mm -hmm. I would say it's time to start vision or talk vision. Mm -hmm. It's never too late or it's never too early. So even if, if you're thinking about putting the ring or you already put the ring on or you, and you're already married, it's never too late or it's never too early to actually sit down and talk vision. You can't get in the car and just drive down the road without an actual direction of where you want to go. Yeah. And, um, I think to add to that, I would say um, great marriages don't just happen. Yeah. Like they're, they're built. You know, you're not going to wake up the day after you get married and have this great marriage. So just understand that it's going to take some work to get to, to get your marriage from good to great. Um, and then make sure that um, you, like I said before, give yourself some grace and be who you are. Be yes. authentically yes. you. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes when we're trying to uh, we're in relationships. Yeah, we, we're trying to impress the person that we're with or we're trying to, oh, I love the workout too because they like the workout and you hate working out, you know? So like you have to be who you are because um, you you can't change. You can't change that. Wow, that was great. That was great. This was a really great episode. All right, guys, please, please let people know uh, how they can contact you, how they can sign up for sessions. It's somebody right now, it's a couple right now that's probably looking at each other and saying, hey, we need to contact them. Please drop your, your contact information. Do you guys have anything up? Uh, yeah, just let us know. Go ahead and drop that, drop that promo. 
All right. So if you want to reach us, the easiest way to reach us is through our social media, um, Instagram. Um, we're at forever.i.do. Um, we have a lot of information there um, in our bio. You can learn the, uh, our links to schedule with us. Um, yeah. So go to our IG, go to the links in our bio, and you'll see book a brag session. Again, we truly believe in building relationships according to God. Again, it's not your old school. We ain't going to smack you with a Bible like grandma, uh, but we are going to hit you with some truths. Yeah. So again, book a brag session. Check out our YouTube. If you're not ready yet, check out our YouTube. Again, link in our bio through our IG. Check out our YouTube. Again, it's forever I do. And check out our videos. See if our content actually match what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, and just one key thing, our introductory session is free. So you can book an introductory session with us for free and see if we're a mesh. Just like you trying to find that perfect partner to date or to marry, you want to make sure that those co the coaches that you choose or the mentors that you choose, they, they actually align with you. They vibe with you. Because um, if we're not vibing, then it ain't going to work anyway. The relationship won't work. So again, like check us out on IG at forever.idu. Check us out on our YouTube at Forever I Do. Yeah. Anything else? That's it. Uh, that's it. Wow. That was really, really great. You guys really dropped some serious heat on this episode. And I thank you so, so much. All right, guys. That is the end of this Power Pack episode. Listen, please make sure you connect with them. All right. Please make sure you connect with Al. Make sure you connect with Lisey. Please, 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 if you're, you're about to be proposed, you're proposing, you're proposing right now. Yeah. All right. If you're married, whether it's been a, a minute or an actual minute, please make sure you connect with them in all the social media platforms. I'll make sure I have all that detailed information in their link to their Instagram. Sign up for that session today. Guys, you can catch out, catch each and every episode hot and fresh. On Tuesdays, you can go to my website, cplandushow.com, or you can just check me out on all these social media platforms. I'm out here, okay? I'm <laughs> out here. We out here. Al, Gleesey, myself, we're out here, okay? Make sure you check us out. And as always, guys, you are the best part of the show. The guests are absolutely phenomenal. You already saw that. You guys are the best part of the show. Until we see you. Tell three people, hey, tell three people that you love them. Tell your partner right now. Tell your partner right now how much you care about them. Write a note, write a letter. All right. And if you need some assistance, make sure you hit up Al and Gleesey. All right, guys. Till next time. Bye. Yeah.